Hello and today we're taking a look into weaving structures that we have in Grasshopper. Those kind of things that are look like uh, nets that we have in those patterns that exist in clothing or other things. And the parameters that we can change of the amounts in the x and y direction as well as the height um, changes of it here. Then also the thickness uh, in, in height and in width obviously and on top of that we also have a surface that is connected to that that can change and manipulate itself to it as we want to have it. So if you want to stick around and take a look at how it works we'll get through this and check out this video we will take a look at this and uh, see how this can be done easily uh, yourself. So anyway, um, this is actually quite a big file, uh, more or less, but it actually is very, very simple. It works with the basic Grasshopper components that you can use, so you can easily follow through it as well. So let's start with a new file. Um, okay, ignore that, they don't need that. So we will first import the geometry into the Rhino environment, uh, in the Grasshopper environment. So we type in the geometry tab, and then we right click it, set one geometry, and click the surface that we want to have. Here, uh, it's now involved in Grasshopper. The next thing is we're going to divide this surface by um, a certain amount in the X and into the Y direction. So we just create two sliders here and we will put those points here. So, however, now we basically we have those points, right? And we need to divide those points so they're like divided like this and they're basically in those kind of groups. Um, so this is basically a group and this is basically a group. Yeah. And each of those things will need to now be moved upwards or downwards because as you see here, some of, every second one is moved upwards and every uh, first one is moved downwards, upwards, downwards and it is the opposite in uh, the next basically group. So if we have those groups, it would be that um, in the, in the this is like the first group, this is the second group, first group, and so on. And in this group, there, those will be needed to move downwards, downwards, and this one upwards, and this one upwards, downwards, upwards, and upwards, oh no, that's wrong. And yeah. so it'd be downwards, upwards, downwards. And so this is basically what we are going to script right now. And in the end, we will have the thing that those things will get then through in like this, like that, and like that. And so we would have this nice, totally not visible. Um, a weaving structure that we want to have in the end. So this is basically the premise of how we want to work with it here. So we have the beginning points now and we are going to simply dispatch basically uh, the trees of it. So if we take the panel and put it in here, we see we have all those different like groups, C001, 002, and those we need to basically separate. So we have each of those lines separately. We're doing this by using a, a tree branch, and then we're also going onto util and then go to the param viewer. And this will basically give us the tree structure. And now we need to use a dispatch function that basically takes out those things from one to the next one. And we're going to take the first, uh, the third, the fifth, and so on of this tree branch. So we're going to use uh, this as the path and the tree from the points here. And you see, as you see, it gives us every second row of those. And we do this with the other one as well. And here we use the list B of that as the path. As you see, it now um, traverses nice and quickly between those two. Now, on top of that, we also need to do a dispatch of the each of those single trees. 
and then we also need to do the same thing but basically not in this direction but in the other direction but we will get to this later so then we are going to dispatch um, the trees of this here and we're going to put those points into uh, another list of points here and we're going to do the same thing with the other one as well and we, if we just deactivate those or make those invisible we see we have those points that do that and those here that do that so this works already and then we also need to move them upwards or downwards so which one do we want to move upwards we need to want to move upwards those ones let's say so we're gonna use the move command then create a unit z direction and then also a, a number slider of our number slider of 10 maybe and create also numbers in between that this will be our main number slider for the height uh, of the amplitude between uh, each of the points so we're gonna uh, name this um, Mm, weave um, kind of height maybe yes that's good and we also might need to have it in negative as well so let's see we're gonna put those points upwards yes I'm gonna put those points upwards and we're gonna need to put those those points downwards so we do a negative and we put this negative into the motion and we move those downwards and then we need to put those downwards as well so we copy this here put it here and the last one will be moved upwards again those will be those points here so let's deactivate those and as you see our pattern already kind of works as how we want to have it so basically as you see it goes um like this is the upward one this is the downward one the upward the downward we can visualize this better if uh, we need to weave them together so we have to weave and then we use the pattern here and there and now we can also you go on the curve and do the nerves curve and then we connect them together and as you see it already gives us uh, this pattern already a little bit let me actually see if I think we need to yeah see as you see it makes this way weavy pattern we also will do the same thing with the other things here and we might yeah exactly and as you see it goes exactly the other way around so this one is the downward one as we had it here like the upward downward upward now we have this one already set up so this is good but we also want to have it in the other direction as well so there is a way of actually um, making this more quicker but um, yeah well let actually we could do it that we just um, we will put those things all in a cluster so we put this first of all here and then we're going to click all of those things that we want to use and we middle click mouse button and put this cluster thing on it and now it's basically this very small thing that we can still just like uh, manipulate in itself so we just have this one here and now we just duplicate this cluster and we're gonna flip the matrix which basically um, takes the points that are normally those groups here and it basically makes those groups from here uh, out here it's basically flipped all the way around so we just use those flip it just as we see it how it looks more or less in the in the in the example that we have um, on the picture here and we're gonna use the wave of this and we might be able to extract the correct things here yeah okay so it works however we have the problem at the moment that it will be exactly the same size but we want to or like the same 
uh, we're worried as to height heightens, we also want to have heightened, but we want to have it under it. So we, this should be the other way around. Um, so one thing to do is we could basically, um, we could explode this cluster for now, and then we basically need to change those things. So I think we just need to um, change those things in between like this and just change them around. And then we also need to put the weaving in the other way around as well, because um, uh, the stitching together basically needs to put those things in the right order again. And now we just click those things again and we create a new cluster. However, in this case, it is basically uh, um, a little bit different than the other one. So those are two different clusters now. Okay, anyway, so now we have our base curves already defined correctly. And now we need to define the, uh, the we need to define the mm, thickness or the main geometry of it. So it gets some weight to it. We're doing this by just uh, moving those uh, or offsetting those curves in this case. And we're going to use this by um, extruding it and then simply offsetting the thing and then doing a um, d doing a ruled surface in between uh, the offset curves, let's say. So we're going to extrude just into the Z direction and we're gonna put a number slider again, like always. And this will be now extruded into the Z direction, like this. Obviously, we will be a little bit less heavy. And we're gonna use the same one here in the bottom as well. So this looks already like something, but we want to have it a little bit less extreme, obviously. So they don't overlap that crazy. But they can actually do a little, go up a little bit. Okay, this looks already quite good. And now we need to um, offset those curves or those extrusions. We just use offset surface and we have to use them twice because we want to offset them one time into the one direction and the other time in the other direction. So um, for each of the extrusions, we can just like, we, we can do also the clusters, but we just duplicate them for now. So we will duplicate now here. Two of those, two of those, two of those, two of those. And those will be then combined like that. And we will make um, also, we need to get the edges of the B rep that basically gives the edges of those curves. And we also want to give it a distance, obviously. And this distance needs to be one time positive and the other time negative. So like this, so there we have it, not, well, one is negative, one is positive. So you see it creates those two curves here and we make this one invisible and those curves will then be um, detected and those detected curves will then be by a ruled surface will be connected together out of the naked curves and as you see it connects this uh, thing very nicely together. And we can adjust it obviously from the number slider here. Okay, so now we will need to do the same thing with all the other ones. Um, actually, to save some time, we can just copy the whole the whole thing over, and we will delete the other ones. Let's copy this, copy that here, copy that here, and we will just replace the surfaces very easily here. And this made a little mistake. I don't know exactly which surface. Ah, okay. This will still has the wrong thing in here. Ah, because it takes the the extru wrong extrusion distance. This takes the correct one. This doesn't here. Seems to me I have a small. Let me just extrude. Let me just copy this one again. I think this would make it easier before I do some life uh, 
debugging. So, so and this would result in the final result that we have here. We're just gonna um, hide this beginning geometry as well. And now we have the finished product and it would be good to maybe set these things uh, closer so we know more or less what we're dealing with here. And we can obviously also name those things, but I think you can do this yourself as well. We already did it in the last tutorial, so it's uh, just before I made it this year. And um, now you can obviously play around with this and um, use it for yourself and in the heights that you need to have it. And yeah, easily change it to the way you want to have it and you, the way you need it. And it should be also be a rather versatile script also in the higher numbers as you see. It could still be like a working script um, even though you have a quite a huge amount of um, those kind of weavy things. So yeah, I think this actually works pretty well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you out. Um, this is a very simple script, but it helps you a lot to find out about the uh, weaving pattern, patterns that we had here in the cluster that puts those things together and creates the right amount of numbers or the right amount of points into the correct uh, areas. And then also how we connect those things uh, together in the surface. And yeah, it's I think it's a very good practice of coming from this um, rather kind of simple looking um, pattern and then importing it into the grasshopper environment and to use it for your own needs and the own way so you want to use it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.